Hey everybody, this is Stamina Podcast. My name is Levi Lobo. My name is Christian Puckett. And my name is George Sheeran. And today we talked about climbing drama, the benefits of reading, and what was the last one, Christian? Uh, Pog and then him being hungover. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for watching. Do you wash your Do you wash your beard with soap, like shampoo? Yeah. <laughs> I don't wash my hair though. <clears throat> Neither do I. Um, no, my smoothie consists of spinach, goji berries, collagen, protein, bananas, what kind of collagen? pineapples. I don't know collagen. There's like multiple different like types. type one, type three, type seven. Probably all of it. All no, of but like, it. Yeah. where does it come? Where's it sourced like from? Like eggshell or bovine. probably like Jamaica. What's the brand? <laughs> <laughs> so another thing with the with the um, mic is it's not the top of the mic; it's the front of it. Mm-hmm. So if you look at it, it's yeah. like a you know what I mean. No, I gotcha. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sometimes we have issues with people where they're like try to like hello, and it doesn't sound good. So. Like that? Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. know. I think that sounds pretty good. Yeah, that does sound good actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> Before we get started. Can we talk about Pog? The definition of Pog. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so I'm assuming you're familiar with Twitch. Yeah. I mean, I know of Twitch. I know it's a streaming platform. I don't use it ever. Well, I don't know who does use Twitch. Like, I don't know who the people are that actually watch streamers and like mm-hmm. are fans. Mid. I mean, Mids. Campbell and Hudson are <laughs> the mid kids, bro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, shit, no, I, 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 sorry guys. I don't think they listen. I, I didn't. I never got the appeal of Twitch, but um, Pog. I guess there was at some point in the history of Twitch, there was some dude, and I don't know his name, and I don't know what he was reacting to, but he he had this face uh, that he he like wore. He wore his face. I don't know. He put on this face that was. Like, just completely mouth stretched, like, okay, like, oh. and it was it was perfect. It was a perfect capture of the moment. Like mouth wide open, surprised. <clears throat> like yeah. he made the face, or he had a face constructed. No, like he was, <laughs> like he put a mask on, or he made the face. It was a reaction. Oh, okay. Uh, emotions danced across his face. <laughs> yeah, just pl- just <laughs> disbelief. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Are you familiar with that face? It's like this Asian dude, and he's just in his reaction. Is it like a meme or something like that? Um, yeah, it, within Twitch, like the pog, it's associated with that image of okay. this man reacting to something. So I looked up pog. It would be a series of faces all with their mouths wide open and in, in, in just disbelief. Correct. Okay. So as in, so pog is something that's like, you know, let's unbelievable. It's hype. Let's go. It's a pog. Whoa. I don't really know. I don't <laughs> like I just know like that's how you would use it. Like like uh you hit a good climb and it's like, dude, that's pog. Dude, that that you was pogged fucking, that dude. That was actually you would say pog champ. Dude, you're a pog, pog champ. champ. No, like, but it's not you're not referring to an individual. He's not like an individual is not a pog champ. You would say, This thing is pog champ. Like, oh, you so, would describe it something as PogChamp. So you're not PogChamp. I'm not but PogChamp. But what you would do... Climbing Every, my something, life, the way I would be living my life, is pretty PogChamp, bro. <laughs> so it's like an adjective. <laughs> it's like a descriptor of, of a cool event that happened. Yeah. Okay, where did it? Where did the name come from? Was the name Dude, of the streamer Pog? That's that's too far. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Uh, that, I don't know that type of information. Okay. And we need to find P-O-G. out. So Pog is, represents the face... This guy made a face. Somehow it started being called Pog, <laughs> and then now you're living a Pog life, Pog Champ life. I live, a, yeah, I live a pretty Pog Champ life. I sleep on a floor <laughs> with cats. That's tight. In a rainforest. In rainforest. Whoa. In a rainforest. Yeah. Dang. Do, do we're you talking rescue about the real shit, bro? Rainforest children. <laughs> <laughs> What's that from? There's a the rainforest Nathan fielder. Children. Thing where they, anyways. Did you guys watch the new Nathan Fielder show? No, but it looks really good. There's an, he has another one. Yeah, he just put out a new show. Do you know who he is? I 
what was that show that he had a long time ago? It must have been like Nathan for you, Nathan for you. And then so there's was, also he produced uh, How to with John Wilson on HBO. I remember there was two shows. I would watch um, Workaholics and Nathan for you. Yeah. And my sister and mom, like, hated me for watching the show because like I'd have it on and they'd come in and be like, "This is the most unfunny thing." Yeah, it's an acquired taste, dude. I, I, was I to, love it. I was supposed to work with Nathan Fielder. Really? You were supposed to, dude. I got. Oh I got, my god! Uh, that I is got, so great. I got pinned for a role on his film he's shooting in Santa Fe right now. Is it a film or is it his TV show? It's a TV like show. The, so the rehearsal, the curse. No, he already shot rehearsal. That's already shot. And they've done that already. That's what you can watch. It's already it. shot. And- I know, but I th- is it just like a one and done season or? If it does well, it'll probably get picked up for longer. Okay. But I think they have one season. It's called The Curse. Uh, my friend Sonia, she, she was on the podcast. Yeah. She's working on it right now. Nice. She said that Nathan's super nice, and she said that. Uh, Safty brother is really intense and not so nice. What is Safty brother? The Safty brother. Just I forgot one which one of, it is. It's Josh one or Benny. Brothers? I think it's. I'm not sure if it's Josh or Benny, but one of them's producing and acting in it. Okay. Which one do you think is more chill? <clears throat> Probably Benny. I don't know. I I DM'd them like five years ago before they blew up, and yeah. they were super chill back then. Um, they like we were messaging a little bit, but now you know I don't know. They didn't cast me, so. They, well, they did cast me, and then they released the pin, which is a bummer. And then I got called to go work on it as crew, and then, because uh, I'm not vaccinated, is that still I lost a thing? that job. Yeah, I've lost like three jobs because of that. Dang. Why yeah. Why haven't you been uh, vaccinated? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I just have a deeply held religious belief. About what? About uh, Pretty sure vaccines body. aren't in the Bible, bro. You're right, but about my body's... Uh, Ability to your fight body is a infection. temple. That's in the Bible. Yeah, your body's body. ability to fight. Yeah, it's bolstered when you get a vaccine. But this is the interesting thing: is I've never been vaccinated, and it's been something that my family and my mom is wait. So you don't really have hard. It. Like what? Nothing. What about like a tetanus shot? Nothing. Zero vax. Zero vaccination. That's not good, bro. You should you should go get some. I am. I am. I am okay with out it. of the mouth of babes <laughs> says vaccines <laughs> are good. They are good, but. It's a honestly, bro. It was one of the most challenging things because I'm sitting there with like something that my family has held very sacred, which is like what you put in your body and what. You, and bro, what it's you, not that deep. Just go get a shot. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, and that's the struggle for me um, because it felt when when I was conflicted with, oh, I'm losing work because of not being vaccinated from COVID. I was like, but anything that what the heck that do probably I do? made you double down. I mean, I didn't have to it, double that. It, I didn't have to do anything. I yeah, just had you to clearly keep. did. All you had to do is go get a, a shot. <laughs> what? But what I've is, never do done that in my whole life. Have to do with with religion. It's uh, part of the belief that I hold. So it's not something that I participate in or have to no, put. I'm talking about the origin of your. There's belief. a there's a few different elements to it. So one would be uh, they use uh, some some vaccines will use. Uh, Fetuses, so like un- un- aborted babies. Um, Wait, what, is that real? I thought mean? that was bullshit. No, look it up. It's th- it's not. I'm pretty sure they don't do that with the COVID vaccine, but there are vaccines that utilize that. And there's a lot. If you, okay, this is like an interesting. I don't think that's legal. Exactly. Well, it, it actually is because you have to look it up. Okay. <laughs> it's I'll look it it's up. bro. There are examples of uh, doctors making like tons of money that are abortion doctors because. Uh, they, um, right. but this is like old, old news when we were doing research about like stem cells and I feel the, the work with fetuses is mostly, um, the importance about fetuses is they still have a bunch of stem cells because they're still growing stem cells. And that's another thing is like in uh, other countries, you can get stem cell therapy, uh, and it supposedly comes from the umbilical cord. But if there are all of these, like, this is a conflicting thought is I don't know why we're talking it's so deep, so intense, so quick. It's not, that, it's not that deep, bro. <laughs> no, it is. This is a conflicting thought I have. Is okay. like if babies are aborted and and they're, what do you do? Where do the babies go? Do you throw them away? Yeah, they literally put them in like they put them in bins, bro. But why would they put them in bins if they could make money off of it? If those doctors could take those. Okay, so you're saying that that there's actually now a, like a drive to have abortions happen. So they can profitize the 
fetuses. No, there's not a drive to it. But in any product, in any production, there's, if there's a demand, bro. Yes, exactly. But if they're in any production cycle, yeah, there are byproducts of that production cycle. Not mm-hmm. just like like even like like guitars or <clears throat> whatever it is that's made around us. There are byproducts of stuff that they can't really utilize that they don't know what to do with, mm-hmm. and they have to find a purpose for that. Mm-hmm. So you don't think that they would be doing that with babies what do they no i i think let's go back to the the (laughs) initial point which is what the (laughs) hell do fetuses have to do with vaccines because there are vaccines that carry uh fetuses and i I the the vaccines carry fetuses there are some vaccines that have uh uh utilize uh aborted babies fetuses I'm gonna have to look into that. Yeah, I don't, I, I've heard that argument before, but I've never given it any time that of day because I don't know. Yeah, it's just like I, I know I'm that there's wrong, like stem cells. Please cell. correct me, but well, I, I looked it up and and that's what I, I saw. So that sounds like like a conspiracy theorist talking point that can be easily disproved within like a couple Google searches. Well, we should look it up. Right. Right now, that's why we we'll need a producer. We can't, yeah. No We're working, on podcast. If anyone wants to be a producer, <laughs> let us know. Yes, yeah, so um, they can look up aborted fetuses and vaccines. But it's also just something that I've held and it's been very challenging to uh, know what to do with something that's deeply ingrained. You know, like when you raise a certain way. Yeah, I was raised a certain way. And everything inside of you is set to believe a certain way. I'm, not, I'm not that uh, rigid in my belief system. I guess I am. Well, clearly. Because I have some level of like honor for trying to uphold something in that so anyways we can move off of this topic no i think it's really interesting (laughs) (laughs) i think it's really interesting about because like maybe maybe this is this could be a good uh growth opportunity for you you could do some research about what vaccines uh use fetuses i i have i would encourage you to as well yeah but uh also i actually don't care i'm not against vaccines (laughs) vaccines <laughs> <laughs> i don't care if it has fetus if, what like what, what are they just like injecting uh injecting us with little uh it's probably just the stem of, cells from if they were to use it it would probably just be the I, stem hope cells. It, I hope if there's stem cells in these vaccines it it's even more motivation to go get the vaccine because i i could look more youthful yeah i mean that's very uh <laughs> separating so for me i carry a sense of like spirituality in the world and I think that that's probably why I that? have a hesitation towards stuff like that. That things are not just physical. Things are not just three dimensional. Uh, things carry something deeper than that. Um, like, like, uh, like spiritualism. Yeah, and so I, and not to say you don't, but I do carry that, and so I feel like that's probably where these conflictions come inside. I'm pretty materialist. Tell me about it. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Tell me more about what you mean, materialist. No, you're you're talking. I'm just saying you're you're a spiritualist. <laughs> I would say I'm not I'm a more spiritualist, a but I do carry spirituality as an important aspect of my life. That's very cool, man. I'm happy for Thanks. you. <laughs> please don't. Please, if you step on a rusty nail, go get a tetanus shot. Oh, I will definitely see if I have issues with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is George. <laughs> uh, he's Levi's friend from yes. the climbing gym. Would you say? Yeah, we, we actually didn't yeah. meet at the climbing gym, though. Where'd you meet? Um, we met at, uh, this party. At a party? You guys met at a party? What kind of party? So, sorry. What? I like to make things up for no (laughs) other reason than my own, um, uh, entertainment. We met at this crazy party that didn't exist. We met at the climbing gym and he was like climbing super hard and super good and pinching like hundred pounds. Did you ever get the hundred pound pinch? I got to 90, I think. I never got the 100. 90, just pinching, bro, and picking up 90 pounds. I can pounds. pinch 100 pounds right here. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's see it. Let's see him do it. Here. Oh. Uh, for people listening, I have this little grip strengthener tool type thing where you squeeze it, and it's like 100 pound resistance. Oh, easy. Yeah. Don't break it, bro. But with, just with your push. fingers, though. No way. I don't know. That's, uh, that's no. kind of like an awkward like. It is, yeah. Thing. I would not Ooh, expect you see. to to be able to squeeze that together. I, I'd be There's pretty no high. What about like, I'd be pretty high. What about, about could, right there? You can't just. Oh well, then yeah. Yeah, but just based off your fingers, that's something different. But, but when you're you pinching, your, you're using your whole. You got a, you got a different like whole meat. You have like way more leverage if you, with yeah. your thumb. But that's when you're pinching. You have the same leverage. 
Well, I guess on it depends a, on, on the climb. hold. There's various types of holds. So sure. for people listening, George oh, yeah. is jacked. <laughs> Would you say? No, I wouldn't say I'm jacked. Okay, I, Dude, I, I, I would say, say George then. probably has the best physique at the gym. I would disagree with you. He's a shredder. Who? Huh? Who? Who what? Who has the best? Alex? I would say, I think Alex, <laughs> I think Alex has okay. the best physique, bro. <laughs> he has like, he has that aesthetic, you know, build. Who do you think has the best physique? Dude, obviously Jorge. Obviously? No, you. I would say you over Jorge. I love Jorge to death. And if you're listening, Jorge, what's up, dog? We got to get you on. But I think that you look like, oh, like with the shirt on. I don't know. Yeah, because without I mean, my shirt. Jorge's just... the only guy at the gym that doesn't wear a shirt. So. <laughs> uh, okay. So, like, I, with the shirt on me, I may, I'm not really that. I don't really look at myself that much because. I used to be really, really skinny, and so that's kind of how my self-image is. You're not skinny, I'll tell you. Well, that. I know I'm not skinny now. I understand that now, but you used to be skinny. I used to be really skinny. Like, like I was like 116 pounds. Like this. Did you? Were you really self-conscious about that at the time? No, I didn't care. But people gave me sh so much shit about it. It's almost like the more you don't care about something, the more people feel like you. They need to enforce that you should care about the way you look. Because they're just like projecting their own insecurities upon you. Is, yeah. is body physique really, is it really competitive at the gym? Like who looks the best? It's not. I think it's a balance uh, of. I mean, because that's how it is carry, at, gym, at regular gyms. Yeah, but climbing is a different kind of beast. Like for me, I think climbing is more about self-empowerment and, and self-ability. And so I can <laughs> climb with somebody. I can climb with somebody who's climbing like ones and twos, twos and threes, threes and fours whatever, and have a blast because I get to be a part of their growth. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can climb with somebody like George, who's hit, like doing most of the eight nines and some of the tens and elevens. Oh, the elevens. Yeah, of course. And dude, that, that yellow one, that's not a 10, bro. I, it's definitely not a 10, but I wouldn't say the moves. Are. Okay. I'm not going to get into the details. <laughs> Just continue with your thought. I think the consensus was, it was more, it was higher than a 10. Okay. But my point is, is like, I can also climb with him. And have a blast because I can see him getting growth. And in that, I can climb different things that I'm growing in. So it's like a... Yeah. Um, but that is to say, there is there is a space that is driven by ego. And uh, since one. I read The Rock Warrior Way, which... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could, we could talk about ego. I, I think a lot... I mean, climbing harder than the eight nines, um, that takes a certain that takes a certain level of ego because you you can only want it so bad for yourself and i feel like i'm at that point where it's just like i hurt and like i don't like i don't want to try that hard so and i don't have anything to prove to myself um so like i i think it takes a certain level of caring about what other people think and needing to it like uh assert like yourself as like a like some sort of dominant force in the gym <laughs> to, to have to climb that hard, which I respect. It's interesting. Yeah. I think that's cool. So you feel as though those who want to climb higher than tens. Oh, you need to be a little bit kooky for certain. You need to be kooky, but you're saying it's all driven by ego. I wouldn't say it's all driven by ego, but there's definitely a large aspect of that. It has to be ego. Hmm. I would say, what do you think, Christian? I mean, I'm still climbing twos and like ones and twos. And so I I can see that bodily physique. But yeah, there's probably some uh, ego aspect. It's, like it's probably ego driven a little bit. Well, yeah, I mean. But what's the difference climbing, between you trying to accomplish the ones and twos hitting your, you're at your ceiling. What's the difference between you at your ceiling breaking through and you at your ceiling breaking through? Yeah, I think through? it's all about uh, improving and about. progressing. We can talk about it, bro. <laughs> But what yeah, it's cool. It's cool when you're climbing two threes, right? Because it's not even so much strength as it is like you're figuring out how to move on the wall. Like yeah, you're figuring out solving. how to climb. And that's why I loved climbing so much was the problem solving aspect. I loved mm -hmm. it so much when I could sit after I fell and like be like, damn, I did something wrong and I have to fix it now. And it's all up to me. And it's it's all me on the wall. And I have to figure out how do I get through this puzzle? And I thought it was so like... Uh, what do you call it? Um, 
Rewarding? Rewarding. That's mm. the word. A lot of neuron activation after it's, I got yeah. the problem. I find it very cool because it balances a very physical side of your brain and a very uh, strategic mental side of your brain. That is like this marriage of these two energies that I sound like such a hippie. It's, it's, <laughs> all, it's, uh, it's all your brain, though. In but fact, it's exercise, also your body. Exercise actually makes you more intelligent. It makes your brain work better. Dude, that's why you're so smart, bro. Okay, I get it. What do you mean by that? <laughs> do you see you this just seem guy like a, <laughs> You're a little bit of an intellectual for being 23. Bro, he would just sit at the gym and like read this, this like... You bring thick, a book to the gym? Thick books. I bring small books. I bring little tiny books. And get okay, so that's another form of <laughs> ego is like <laughs> pretending to be more <laughs> enlightened and well-read than I, all the other meatheads at the gym. I hate... I hate... I hate it so much that people view reading as some sort of intellectual <laughs> thing because it's it's like we all read as yeah. children, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no there was no thought as like, oh, I'm reading. I'm better than the, these other people because I can read. It's I find reading enjoyable like any other hobby mm. and you can do it almost anywhere. Yeah. Why wouldn't I just do it? In the places like in my downtime, let yeah. me let me make fun of you. Come okay. on, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> for reading. <laughs> I think you've inspired me to read uh, more, and that's been like a very exciting thing for me lately. Is finding like, oh, I can get my dopamine in my brain to chill out a little bit to be able to sit there and be in silence isn't and it, read. Isn't it great to like when you haven't been reading and then you try and it's like oh, I can get through like fifteen pages and then I'm just like done. Because yeah. it's so hard to focus for that long. Yeah. But like the more you do it, the easier it is to just sit down and just read for like four hours and like yeah. get through a hundred pages or something like that. Yeah. It's great. I can't get through a hundred pages in four hours, but I think that that's really cool. Um, I just maybe have someday. a baby that interrupts me every like 30 seconds. So reading for a long stretch is a little bit more difficult to obtain. But I think you'd have to have more concentration to do it within that because you're getting interrupted and then having to bring your brain back to where you were in the book at that time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Audio I can see why books, it's more know. challenging. Yeah. I just pick, click pause on my phone on the audiobook. That's the best way to do it. There you go. Mm. Audiobooks are great too. Um, can I ask just for some context? I don't know you at all. Could yeah. you just summarize your life in like three or four sentences? <laughs> no, I, I can't. Do okay, it. five five sentences. <laughs> um, just give me a little bit of context, because I don't know you at all. I'm just like like a regular type dude. Okay, but you said you're from Las Cruces. Are, are you based? I don't know what that means. What do you mean by based? I don't know. Is are you mid? Like your kids saying that nowadays? Am I? I'm definitely, <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm mid. Okay. Actually, I don't know. Some people might describe me as mid. I would describe you as. Uh, interesting. So tell us more. What, how would you describe yourself? <laughs> except, okay, so imagine, <laughs> imagine you're a listener and, and you, and the listener doesn't know you either. How would you describe yourself as if you were listening? How would I describe myself? If I was listening to the, <laughs> yeah. And you wanted to know who you were listening to. Um, okay. So I'm just like, just like, you know, like a regular type dude. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so regular guy. Continue. He perceives himself to be a regular guy. Um, yeah, yeah. That's you that's, rock climb. That's true. Consistently, um, I rock climb like almost every day because it's fun. Okay. Um, let's see. I moved out here like what's what's the year? Twenty twenty two. Shit, bro. <laughs> I moved here into Albuquerque um, December twenty eighteen, and I moved in with my sister. Where did you move from? El Paso. I'm from El Paso. Okay. Born and raised. Wow. So you're a Texan boy at heart. I wouldn't say that. No, you are. <laughs> I'm, I would say I'm more of a like El it or Pas not El Pasoan. Yeah. I think El Paso. I feel is like a yeah, that's its own kind of different place. culture. Yeah. It's. I'm not gonna get into politics uh, that, <laughs> at this stage, um, but yeah, it's a vastly different place from what you would think as like texas it's pretty removed from like the texan culture anyway okay that's so your you qualifier. grew up there grew up there you came here why did you come to new to albuquerque um i wanted to change an environment uh because i was just like I, know, I was living with my my parents and just like not really doing anything um i was just game all day 
That's pretty chill. Nice. Uh, but I, I knew I needed a, some sort of like different stimulation because the way my life was going, it wasn't very rewarding. Shout out to, to Christopher for, for the word rewarding. Christian. Oh, I'm sorry. All good. Christoph? You know, <laughs> Christian. Dude, Christopher is cool. Whoa. My neighbor calls me Christopher. Whoa. Yeah, that's the only person that calls me Christopher is my neighbor. That's really cool, Christopher. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Christopher. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> rewarding. Okay, yeah. Rewarding. Shout out. Shout out to Christian. Um, but yeah, no, I I needed something different, so I I uh, moved down here, lived with my sister and her boyfriend. That was real fun. Nice. Love. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so I lived with them for like a year, and then I moved in with my aunt, and I was getting. I got my degree from CNM in history. And then I transferred well, to UNM. Any specific kind of history or just general history? It's, it's a community college degree. Okay. So, <laughs> what I mean, I have, a, less, I have a community college degree less too. Less than generalized, as in random shit that they give you a piece of paper for. And, yeah. And you're like, cool, thank you. As in, like, whatever uh, professors I, what decided I took to teach is, wanted to. Um, Western Civ, Western Civ 2. Um, I took a, a Viet. Vietnam War history class. That was Whoa. really cool. Um, with this really great professor. Uh, what is his name? Doesn't matter. He does, dude. I need to shout him out. <laughs> okay. Podcast. Oh, you like, okay. You I know, he's him. really cool. Um, hopefully I'll remember his <laughs> name. Like, <laughs> how, like, how do you, how do people remember people's names? I don't know. Just like in their head. <laughs> That's <know>? crazy. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Um, and then, what about you, you had a huge fascination War? with history all of a sudden. With and history? Like, yeah. Like, um, why did you decide to go with history as your direction? Well, I didn't. Well, I didn't really know anything about the world, and yeah, I thought it was interesting because I just take the class, and then I would it would like open up a new perspective. Because in my mind, like, I guess in mo- pe- most people's minds, like we were like less advanced, we were like stupider, um, we knew less in general about the world. We had less like uh, developed and complex personalities. I, I don't know. I had a very small um, world Like view. as an American or as Just like in a general about the individual. past. Individual, okay. Um, and I would learn these things and like learn about the way these people were, you know, doing their thing back then. I'm just like, damn, I guess shit, shit I ain't really uh, changed that much. And hmm. I just thought it was fascinating. And it's interesting to see like all the patterns Kind of repeat themselves throughout history and more than anything i'm very interested in like uh human behavior and just like i just think it's weird the way we do shit the way we do yeah there's no real explanation for it other than like uh evolution and then you mentioned evolutionary uh psychology and people get trigged so trigged they get trigged trigonometry that, oh <laughs> they they <laughs> <Just> kidding <laughs> Trigged means for the older generation. Triggered. 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 And Triggered. for the even older generation Which from means there, it's not pulling a gun it's weapon. <laughs> it's hot, when you're... What do they call it? Hot hot button? Hot topic? It's yeah. A hot, button, um, hot button topic? It's a hot button topic. <laughs> hot topic. Hot topic. Shutter shades. Hot topic. Hot topic lava lamp. Yes. Hot topic poster. <laughs> but I think getting into this stuff would be interesting. Like the... Your fascination with history, with... Uh, uh, evolutionary psychology because um, that's like how we kind of started talking in the first place was you, me, and Alex were sitting there and Alex was like talking about his crazy stuff and then you were talking about your crazy stuff and they were completely from different camps I okay, would say. resume. Alex struck me as a man who knew a lot of random shit um, which is Alex funny. Salazar, the guy that was on the podcast previously Within the stru- within the conversation, um, uh, I mentioned what was I? What was we were talking about? I mentioned uh, structuralism, mm-hmm. and and then he went off from there talking about all sorts of random stuff. It, it's hard to it's hard to have any uh, decent conversation with someone when uh, your your approach to like. <laughs> uh, like fucking any sort of topic is so different mm. and especially when he has he has like so much random knowledge uh, about other things that he'll just throw in <laughs> and it's it's hard to keep up you know mm. 
So when you describe so, uh, not socialism, structuralism, mm -hmm. what do you mean? Um, so as far as, as I've educated myself about structuralism, it's just a, uh, it's like a systemized approach to understanding culture, uh, as in, uh, in the topic of sociology. Um, but as in, we have structures that are like unseen um, and it's systemic and I don't know, I, I don't really, I haven't educated myself on structuralism in a while, so I'm not gonna cool. speak on it, but I was reading about it at the time or I had been reading about it at the time. So I thought it was an interesting idea. So is it kind of, I mean, to try to understand, is it like uh, emergence theory? Like things emerge, like structures emerge out of necessity for survival or, <clears throat> and not that, not that they are true, but they are convenient or is that like, is that making any sense? Is that <laughs> there can, um, like, like the idea of God or the theory of, of, of a creator doesn't necessarily have to be true to be convenient for survival. Yeah, of course. You don't, you don't necessarily need things to be true, especially not when it comes to people and what they believe. So like we talked previously about um, your uncle who was working on the steps for mm -hmm. uh, approaching developing countries, right? And right, it was bringing more, yeah. Um, Tell me about that. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's we go into like developing countries, and there's all these different actors involved, um, and they all have their own um, like goals in mind. So we'll go in and try to you know like, just like a say we're trying to build a, a like a mine. We're trying to construct a mine in <laughs> somewhere in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. um, who owns the land? Who's the in, the authority in charge of like enforcing law? Um, who are the other people within the country that like uh, have their own interest in that mind development? You mm -hmm. know what I mean, there's all these different things at play, and so when we move, we move into these like uh, environments. Um, it's not really considered. Like all these people aren't really considered, and this is why you get all this conflict. Um, especially in developing like uh, these projects. Okay. Um, so what, what he was doing was uh, going into these countries and like developing relationships. And he kind of built a, like a approach, like he kind of put up together an entire theory about how to approach these things. And he called it uh, the Inca system. And sorry, Badalagi is like, I'm so tired, bro. <laughs> Do you want me to cut in and no, no, cut the monologuing? It's good. It's good. Um, cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Tell me more. <laughs> um, so yeah, he built he built this system, um, and he he had uh, like these different scales for a country of develop like it, and certain scales of their own development, um, and he, what was interesting the part that I was working on was within the the way that he would label these like certain countries. He would do it in like a multifaceted uh, way. So he would consider economy and uh, the the social systems that they have in place, like uh, the systems of power. So like, what religion did they have? Things like that. But what I was working on when I was over there was um, <laughs> the the ways in, in which. <laughs> They approach like uh, child abuse. Like, what what prevalence does child abuse have in these like uh, countries, right? So, he he had like this little like numbered system, um, and like one would be like the worst. Like, the the you have the adult does not take care of their children. At any moment, they could sell them, beat them to death like put them in an oven put them in a like whatever yeah there's no consistent um like uh parentage there or like guardianship and then the second structure maybe there's a little bit more of um 
a societal pressure to take care of your children. But like at any moment, like shit could still hit the fan and there's no, there's no like, like overhead, you know, no, um, governing structure that would protect the rights of children. Thank you. Yes. Whether that is religion or government. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and then three is where you would move into like a very, uh, you would move into a structured like rule set of like, this is how you take care of your children, whether it be through law or like, um, religious, uh, law, I God's guess. law, God's law parentheses. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where things start to get better. Um, because there's the children as they're growing up, they know that they're protected by these rules. So as long as they follow certain rules, they're not going to get, you know, beaten to death or something like starved, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and apparently, uh, he works with, uh, like social trauma. That's what he got his PhD in. So apparently that's the way that you're uh, raised has a huge impact on your psyche and mm. it affects the entire population because when everyone is raised in this certain environment, it affects society as a, at whole. I mean, it affects the next generation that affects the next generation. I was talking with a friend who runs a nonprofit called Juntos, which mm -hmm. is an organization in the international district that uh, is basically like a safe place for kids to go after school. Um, if their houses aren't good, if their home environments aren't good. And some of the kids, like parents are homeless. Some of the kids, you know, don't have the structure that we grew up in. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, we all like for the majority of my life, I had a two parent home uh, and we were on food stamps for a little while. We weren't super wealthy, but we were fine. You know, um, towards after I was 17, then I was a one parent home and it was more stressful. And even from those few years of like that, I felt this tremendous impact. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's like fascinating and actually just so intense to see the the effects of that. But this organization, Juntos, is and I, and I went over there to talk with them because I'm trying to figure out how to work with this like homeless issue and the, this poverty and, and unhoused and all this stuff. And, um, it's true. Like the trauma, unless like you, you start with educating kids, um, you, it's really, really hard to like reverse. Yeah. It's, it, that creates, it's just their, their way that they approach socialization in general. Um, but it, that would be an example. The fact that we have juntos, the fact that that exists is indicative of a higher level in this in this system um or even outside of like the family structure supporting right the community the, of children there's there's another yeah. um place where they can get support uh so like cameroon you know uh people will like uh, parents will just sell their children um there's no oversight so like just think about what that does to like a, a society as a whole like the mm -hmm. way that they think about other other humans, like fellow human beings. Yeah. Uh, apparently, this is it affects it great. Like it affects a great amount of like how they deal with, um, like business practices and things like that. Mm. So I don't know. It's it seems like a real complex thing that he's working on. So so the the strategy to approaching these places that are that have a low level or low scoring results on specifically child abuse uh, and how to approach those structures respectfully as well as implementing things that will promote higher. Uh, right. It's just important to look even down to like every detail, even down to like how, how does this place treat their children mm -hmm. essentially? Um, it's, yeah, he's into some deep stuff, and he's been working on it for probably like three decades. So, dude, that's wild. Yeah, and you were you went out there and you were doing uh, uh, like research for him and stuff. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, holy yeah. moly, DC. It was a great time, <laughs> dude. I've never been to DC. It's, Have you? Yeah, I took a outdoor. That's cool. Trip. Anyways, George. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What did you think? I mean, honestly, I don't really have. I, I've been to Washington, D.C. 
What did you do? You I took saw him? Barack Obama. What? Hell yeah. yeah, bro. This was when he was Who running was for uh, the president. Barack Barack Obama, the former president Barack of the United Obama. States. Yeah, former damn. President. What was that? Uh, that would probably be a little bit before your time. You're a little, <laughs> you're a zoomer. You're a little based, so. you know. So. Oh yeah, you weren't quite politically mature yet. What was that like? Uh, Nineteen. You're playing COD, bro. <laughs> No, you're he's like playing Call Pog. of Duty. <laughs> Cod Pog. I do remember the that moment in history, the the election where Donald Trump was elected. And that that those couple years previous. That was when you started like first paying attention to politics? Yeah, well I think what we got me is paying attention to just like what, what was going on uh with society was like this there was like this weird shift where we started to become what do you call it? Politically correct was the original term. Right. Politically correct. And then there was like this this backlash against that. I remember on YouTube at the time, I, I've i always been a big YouTube uh, enjoyer. Sure. Consumer. Same. Same. Um, we grew up on YouTube. We probably all have that in common. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we all grew up on YouTube. Yeah. I would see these videos of, like at first it was pretty innocent. It was like uh, the, f- the fucking like cringe compilation. Oh, man. Of, and it was like SJW cringe compilation. And of course it wasn't like, there wasn't, I, I didn't have any ideology behind me watching these videos. I wasn't like, yeah, fuck, like yeah. I hate women, like shit <laughs> like that. But, um, I would watch them because they, they put on these ridiculous people and they're just making a fool of themselves. But it, it's that association that started to grow is like, uh, the left and like these, uh, extremists who care about gender and all these things. Um, they're just clowns. And I would start to consume a lot of this YouTube. And especially a gamer, the gamer community. The, it was like, especially like when it started, they started to throw the word feminism in there. Mm. It was like feminist cringe comp. <laughs> and then, and I was like, damn, that's hilarious. But it was when I started to like, I would scroll down through these videos and I would read the comments. And there was some really just gross stuff in there. And I started, mm. I was like, damn, like the people that are watching these videos kind of like actually hate women. You know, and I was, it started to make me a little conscious of that. Mm. Um, and I remember like at the same time it was like Jordan Peterson was starting to grow in popularity. Yeah. And it was funny cause I would watch a Jordan Peterson video, listen to him be like, I mean, you could have said that in like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm That's sitting a here. 20 today. minute video. Of, yeah. Dude. Uh, three minutes of points. You could have said that Twitter. in two minutes, but at the same time, like it was like the, uh, the algorithm would recommend me Jordan Peterson videos and then these feminist cringe comp videos Whoa. like just hammering it in. And I was like, I would read the comments on the Jordan Peterson videos and they were so similar to these other comments. And I was like, damn, there's a lot of hatred right now. This is really strange. Mm. And then, um, politics, it seemed like our, poli- like our political system was getting even more divided. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I, I wasn't really around paying attention during the uh, Obama period, but um, I think it's been heightened because of. Uh, sorry, your thing is distracting me when you spin. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's cool. I just I just need to focus better. Um, I think it's been heightened because of just technology and the prevalence of yeah, like, that's what I was small say. communities being able to share ideas yeah quickly and radicalize people. Super yeah, quickly. on both sides too. I mean, yeah. it's it's not something that's just uh, on one side of the the aisle. Well, it's, it's I would say yeah. I don't. I'm not really. <laughs> I kind of hate both sides. Not yeah. hate. That's a strong word. But I feel like do let's radicalize like, against both sides of the radicals. <laughs> I'm more of like <laughs> I'm more of like a centrist. <laughs> no, I know no. centrist is a bad word these days. Yeah, yeah you, because you then be you're cringe. not standing for anything, right? That's I mean, the I would identify as a centrist, but Same. I just feel oh, like it's no. cringe. It's just like no, you can't. I can, as in like, <laughs> as in you have no ideology. <laughs> yeah, generally, like I'm trying to figure it out. So maybe it's not so much of a centrist, but I'm not participating. Okay, so in like the left, right, conservative, liberal, like framework that I don't think many people are actually. Like maybe people in Washington and New York and maybe people that are running for office and stuff. But I don't I, if you're not actively engaged in in government, I think most people 
I don't know. It's so, tough. So because you're a, I, you're I a realist. Hope, maybe. You're just like, I got to fucking pay my bills, man. I got a kid. Right. I'm focusing on <laughs> other stuff and, and politics is over there. Yeah. And I'm kind of observing it from a distance. So probably, uh, yeah, centrist would be like you're in the middle of it, which I'm not. So I'm, I'm just an outsider. I'm a bystander. Right. Yeah. No, centrist would still would still be like. I have an ideology and it's like, I don't have one because I, I kind of understand both sides, bro. And I'm just like, I'm just in the middle, but you know, what's but wrong with that? I don't, it's I complete don't, bullshit. Okay. Can you elaborate, please? Okay. Um, you can't ha not have an ideology. I would say that the, the people who are the most, uh, full of ideology are the centrists because this feedback is fucking me up, bro. Feedback? I can just like hear my voice. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. Um, the centrists have the most ideology packed in because they're participating on the discussion on both sides. <laughs> yeah, I would say they're the most affected by the idea that they cannot. Oh, shit. I was reading, um, I was reading a book about this. I'm trying to summarize. It was, it was done so well. Um, I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> it's really hard to think right now. I mean, you were up late last night, huh? Yeah, I was, I was up a little late. <laughs> what were you doing last night? Just, you know, drinking. He, was just, he was just reading books. Oh, okay. You know? Reading just books. Okay. <laughs> I'm obsessed with the... Really hungover. <laughs> really, really. Hungover. So Dang. tell us about last night. You went out to Anodyne, which is a bar no, no, in town. No, me, yeah, what happened? I got to finish this thought. Can you finish I, the thought? I, I'm <laughs> Are trying, you capable? You're welcome to. I'm but trying until then. so hard. What was I? I was okay. Centrism. centrism. I, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Fuck those guys, bro. Okay. Elaborate, <laughs> please. So uh, you feel that the centrist ideology is a negative thing? Yeah, I. I feel like. If, if you've educated yourself enough on like right left how can you how can you be in the center and be like you know both sides are kind of like equally right because they're so opposing in like the way that they believe things work so it's mm -hmm. kind of a contra you're you're being contradictive um because like the way that the way that like what the left side uh, the left so like uh any socialist believes that uh we should govern ourselves versus you know a conservative is so opposing how can you just be in the middle and be like maybe both sides i can i can explain right. why i would think you could yeah go for it uh i would say that in a world where there are uh, uh 7 billion people uh, there is going to be a spectrum of belief. Yeah. And for me to justify feeling like everybody has an opportunity to believe and do and feel and be what they want, mm -hmm. I have to accept that both sides will exist because I don't think there will ever be one side. And I think the second that there is one side, then it's, uh, then it's probably an unhealthy ecosystem of thought. Yeah. So I think that that by structural, by structure, the structural framework of a society has to, and I hate it, but it has to move into these two polarizing sides of discussion. And through those you, discussions, you that's, that's a natural aspect of, I think it's a structural emergence. And because of that, what happens, at least in the United States is decisions change very slowly. Mm -hmm. And so the majority of people have an opportunity to feel empowered because like, what is life about? For me, life is about communities of people getting along, enjoying and doing things. So if you can break communities into communities of people with the same thought and they're able to get along, do things and enjoy things and feel justified, feel empowered, feel whatever in their groups, then, then people are living a good life. So I don't really care what ideology people carry as long as they're finding a community of people getting along and, and there's thought towards uh, health, wealth, and prosperity, and um, people aren't getting shot in the streets. I don't know. <laughs> you know? No, um, I, I get where you're coming so, from. I would say, I would just say that that's, that's a very, uh, you're very privileged to have that outlook, that um, your way of life hasn't been impeded by 
the, the political ecosystem, the way that uh, your life is governed. Um, pretty chill. And I guess we are privileged in America to have, to be able to think those ways. Yeah, I think definitely. Yeah. Like on the scale of uh, the, what is it, Inca? Inca scale, yeah. On the Inca scale, I think, yeah, we're, we're pretty like lucky. Six or seven, at least. <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> you doing all right? You need, Dude, you need I, some water? I've had so much caffeine. I don't know how I'm tired. <laughs> I've had so much. Because your body actually needs sleep. Like Yeah, sleep over oddly, caffeine, for oddly sure. Oddly enough, like your body is a machine. And it's detoxing how much alcohol right now? I don't actually recall. Okay, so. <laughs> I, I was walking. I did a lot of walking. Yeah? Yeah, because we went downtown, so. I know we went to a couple places. Yeah, so your liver is just in overdrive right now, trying to like, all right, let's get all this shit out. And then no, you probably feel acidic coffee into your liver as well, I which feel is great. Cause, except oh. I'm tired. Like my, physically, I don't feel like I'm digesting poison right now. Well, it's cool you don't feel that, but you are. <laughs> I would say that I'm just built different. <laughs> that my liver is goaded, bro. <laughs> what is it? Hog your liver status. is yeah. Pog champ, pog champ liver. I do have pog champ liver, bro. <laughs> Dude, I I really do enjoy the conversations we have when it when, because like we can shoot the shit and talk shit to each other because we I think we probably have very different outlooks on the world, mm -hmm. but then we can like look at it and still discuss like stuff and uh, well, in like good faith, yeah, yeah. I I I don't like I don't really like having any sort of political. Um, discussion. Oh, so you're a centrist. <laughs> <laughs> How privileged of you, bro. No, I, I said I don't <laughs> like. Um, Must be nice. Not dude. that I don't believe. I don't I don't enjoy having any conversations where... No, I'm the same way, honestly. Where people are so like... They're so serious about these things. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is great. I think people should care. But... Have a have the right opinion, you know. <laughs> so you're a right wing guy. I'm a, I'm a right winger, yeah. Nice. I believe in like you know, <laughs> guns, Jesus, and he's from Texas. Beer. I mean, dude, you are from El Paso. What about right? trucks? You like trucks? I would say that trucks are uh, are necessary, dude. I saw you pull <laughs> up with your fuck Biden flag uh, sticking out of the back of your truck. Yeah. That was pretty sweet. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, with next to my um, next to your American flag or the next to the flag. Confederate yeah. flag that I had sticking up out of my <laughs> out of my window. Oh my gosh, man! Dude, I saw one. I saw a fucking car. He's joking for everybody that no, is listening. No, not, bro. <laughs> anyway, I saw a car going down San Mateo. Uh, dude had his fucking Confederate flag, yeah, sticking out of his his backseat, like passenger side, just high. It was huge. It was a big flag. It wasn't just like a sticker. Is his bigger than your flag? Dude, it was even bigger than my flag. <laughs> it was even bigger. <laughs> and that, that thing's no joke. Does that make you, you angry? Roll it up? Has, what? People what, who do that. Expressing like... No, I... I, I have, you have to wonder about where they are yeah. mentally. That they're just like... Like, what is their worldview that they're like, I have to, I have to put up this flag. People have to know, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it, this is, a, it's pretty extreme, bro. I, I don't, I would have to care a lot to go out and buy a flag and then like put it in my car Yeah, and like make sure it doesn't, you know, fly out. Yeah. You got to upkeep that. If, yeah. you, if you weren't a centrist, <laughs> you probably would do that, you know? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> dude, I saw a dude with a, a Trump flag and he was like, parked and it was like a big flag it might have been the same guy but he, he was living out of his car yeah and i was like dang that's, that's a bummer that's a bummer man yeah but that's he huge. had the flag he had a flag so, um so he had some pride in the that which uh, maybe gives him what do you what do you associate with the what is it what's the flag the confederate flag the confederate flag what do you what do you associate with that well i now i mean no, i don't know what yeah, it was just like, like in general yeah like i feel like a handful of years ago like probably before 2020, it could have meant a few different things, but now it definitely means like if you have a Confederate flag, you definitely believe in the fundamental way of living life in the South 
how many like 200 years ago two or 300 years ago which means that you're <laughs> you're racist as in you believe as, that to put it white, bluntly the white people yes. the white man is should have supremacy all over all the other races right i think at this point in time if you're flaunting your confederate flag you're probably right. there's a lot of roots i, of racism, I would say that for sure yeah prior to these talking points um maybe it didn't have that connotation maybe it was more of a pride thing especially if you weren't too informed on the the history of the flag um or you only were aware of the the good aspects i'm unaware of what is what it is right but the talking points now are like the people that that are so prideful of this flag are racist that's those are the talking points so at least there must be some association that association must be still held by the people who are even like have the flags so they're they're putting this out and they're showing like this is what i believe there what what was that one show that had the confederate flag um as like it was like kind of really a part of the show it was about a show in the south um duck dynasty nah it's shit duck it dynasty. was a really popular show probably in like the 2000s dude you could be on mm-hmm. duck dynasty um <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, I wish I remembered the name of the show, but I, I know that well, some people would use that as an excuse of just, oh, I really like this one show. What was it about? Fuck, what's the name of the show? Like, I don't remember. It's like, Let us know in the comments if you know what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I know that a lot of people like on certain podcasts that I would listen to, like people would use that show as an excuse of just like, hey, I have the Confederate flag up because it, the show is, is kind of symbolic of that one show. Right. I've so, what is the, the Confederate the flag represented? Is let me the, look up the name but of the show. You could I'm sorry. say, you could say, okay, cool, a swastika, something, a symbol associated with a, you know, a regime that killed millions of innocent people. You'd be like, yeah, I, I associate this with like, it's like a Nordic peace symbol, bro. Well, that's but what's like, tough. Before it was associated with Hitler, it was a symbol for the sun. I think it was, it was something, but. It's it's a little it's a cool little thing. It's like a and now it's become more than uh, it's it's, it's, be, it's been symbolized and become it's more associated than just with a, ideology. Yeah, yeah. And so I think maybe sometimes people participate in the symbol without understanding the ideology. And so there's this like new wave and not new, but for me it's new. This new wave of like the responsibility behind understanding the ideology behind the symbols. Right. It's it's a responsibility. Yeah, because um, a lot of people are the ignorant. Dukes of Hazard. That's what it is. The Dukes of Hazard. Dukes of Hazard. Uh, <laughs> Dukes of I know Hazard. a lot of people really liked that show, and the Confederate flag was heavily tied to that show. I've never seen the show. Right, but sorry, I, you guys were talking about something, and I, <laughs> I kind of zoned out. <laughs> but I think that's an interesting idea. Like the, uh, we'll wait for him to start the cameras again. But the the responsibility that has been placed on the individual to understand who they're offending by uh, using and, and, and displaying the, the certain symbols sim- they may have symbols. grown up with and yeah. have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what it means to another people group. But yeah, I mean, I guess if you, if you grew up with the, the Confederate flag being around, then um, it would be a little tough to hear that you're a racist or, you know, what's kind of having reason- and displaying one. Yeah. What's kind of interesting is that I feel like... I mean, I had to hide mine before you got here, so I'm just kidding. I don't care yeah, we that. tucked it in the corner over there. <laughs> How do you feel about the American flag right now? Mm. I hate America. You hate America, so you're an anarchist? No. No. I don't, I don't care enough to be an anarchist. <laughs> so you're uh, agnostic <laughs> about America. <laughs> You're participating in all the benefits that America has Bro, bestowed upon you, but you don't appreciate When I engage, it. yeah, when I engage in, you know, like, like watching the news or like uh, politics yeah. or the state of the economy or all these social movements that are happening, it's just all negative shit. Yeah. It's all negative. And I know like right now my life is fine. Um, but I know it could probably be better. Um, and I think that's how a lot of people feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, it's upsetting that it's just upsetting the way the world is, bro. Mm. And I, it's, it's hard to, 
to not be just like indifferent. At yeah. Places. It's tough because you can look down any direction and there's a lot of, it's a shit show kind yeah. of in any, in you know, any path you travel down, whether that's the education system, the healthcare system, the political system, the, the, the further you dive into it, it's just like, Oh, at the end of the day, these are all just human beings running these institutions or organizations and human beings are just like us. And they're kind of, you know, uh, except we're different. bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't participate. We're bro. pog champs, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I, I totally understand not resonating with America because it seems like now it's like, I'm sure for certain people in the past, it's, it's done really great things, but now it kind of, we're, I feel like we're living in a different world post internet and we're like the post enlightenment uh, with all this information we have now and the information era is what we're living in. Yeah, the, the excess of information, yes. Uh, what do we do with, it seems like things are kind of falling apart and now you look at other countries or other ways of how societies are run and you're like, well, why aren't we doing that? Because the way capitalism, uh, unchecked capitalism is running itself, it's, it's running itself into the ground right now and fertility rates are tanking, mental health is like totally up on like increasing exponentially, maybe not exponentially, but mental things are falling like, apart. As in mental health like issues. Mental yeah, mental health issues okay. are increasing. The average lifespan is decreasing. So it's like every category is either going up um in a bad way or going down. Yeah, the world is becoming a shittier place. So is it just the world or is it America? Oh, it's the world. I would say in most places in the world right now it, Things are just getting worse. But okay, but there's also the argument though that this is the best it's ever been in in human history. I would say that argument is it's it's underlying the the idea that like things are great, man. The system works. We should we should keep things as they are. Um, maybe it's the best, but it can be better. And as you said, if things are uh, on a on a on a scale. Things are getting worse that like we can measure these things like, but like, I don't even know if I honestly, like, I feel like anecdotal, anecdotal, totally. Well, no, you just said like, like uh, it's getting worse, but yeah. statistically it's getting better. Well, maybe like no, if you, it depends on too, what test you're looking at. I guess, yeah, it if really you're looking depends at a hundred years, at. it's better. If you're looking at a thousand years, it's a lot better. If you're looking at 5,000 years, it's a hell of a lot better. But if you're looking at like 20, if you're looking at 20 years, it's so much worse. <laughs> if you're looking so at 20 much. years, then it's probably maybe worse. No, like 20,000. When you know back when we used to be hunter gatherers, bro, that was that was goaded. That was probably peak human civilization. It was it was how we evolved. So, it's probably the best <laughs> possible life. Oh, everyone looked like you cuz they <laughs> everyone, had to hunt for their food. <laughs> yeah. Everyone everyone was uh was in great shape. Uh we were healthy. I love how knowledgeable you are of human civilization 20,000 years ago. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, tell us about it. How'd you, how'd you learn that? 20,000 years ago? Well, I guess there's a there's a scale of like where we were hunter-gatherers and then we had the agricultural revolution, um, which was 10,000. 10,000 years ago? 10, we started planting things? Yeah. Um, Before that, we just run around with like sticks? Well, I, yeah, I'm sure we had a, we had a tool system. <laughs> We had tools, you know, we, we had tools. So, but the point of what we were talking about is that uh, we as 20 to 30 year old white males in the United States feel that it is worse than it's been in, in our lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But why did you have to preface it? So, because I'm just breaking it down by the categories but that not, our opinions fit bro. into. I'm from Laos. Yeah, tell and us, your last name is Martinez. <laughs> yeah, but from Spain. Spanish. Is that white or is that Spanish? Spain is European. S yes, if you're from Spain, you're, you're a white person. But I do have, uh, yeah, a little bit of like uh, indigenous, Apparently. but it doesn't, it's not. I have 2% like, like Native American. Yeah, I'm like 20% Native American. It's not a lot, so. Yeah, I was, I'm from Laos, so I don't know. 
What is Laos? I don't even know what that is. It's just a country. It's you're not a, from Laos. I know. Oh, you're, you're from, from El Paso. You're from El Paso. <laughs> I'm from Vietnam, bro. <laughs> I'm just different. Well, um, I don't know. How do you guys feel? Tired. Tired? <laughs> I'm very tired. Well, it's you've been good. you've been so gracious with your thoughts and opinions, and I'm. I wish I could I could express them better. Well, don't get hung over. I'm, I'm the same don't way. Drink the, don't drink the night I before. I didn't drink last night, and I wish I could communicate better. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to school. I think. For why? I just feel like I'm not exercising my mind. That's fair. And you need somebody to tell you to do that. You need. He needs just read books. Seriously, bro. Just read, bro. That's all college is. College is, here, read this book and then write a thing about it. There's more to it than that. I mean, I mean if, if you value class discussions with uh, with the uh, the great um, students at UNM. <laughs> yeah. And they're great But you can find communities outside of that. Like on Instagram, dude, I've been posting just like... You're reading, I'm reading a book you gave me. I'm reading a book my other friend Autumn gave me. We're like, and we're having discussions about these ideas. Um, and I think, so you can find community. It, yeah. My point is, is if you, if you feel like school is something you need, I think that's awesome. I have a hard time with it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there a way to like debate and argue, but in a, in a good faith, light hearted manner with people um, I guess this podcast is great because it does challenge me to form opinions and try to explain and debate mm-hmm. those opinions and, and listen to other people's opinions and try to absorb those. Um, but that's only like an hour and a half a week. And I could get that in other ways. Like I could do, we could do like a small a community group or I could meet up with friends at coffee shops, but I'm sort of a recluse. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm definitely an introvert, but I, I, I'm very independent. And so it is, it's rare for me to like, unless I'm putting myself, unless I'm forcing myself into that situation, I will not, I probably I won't do it. So I, I need to find ways to challenge my, my brain mm-hmm. so that I can like work on my mental, like communication skills and whatnot. Hmm. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> uh, I just, I don't know. I feel like you don't have that problem because you're probably more social than I am. Emily, my wife, does not have that problem because she's like, she she gets so much out of being around different people and talking, like talking things to form opinions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I sort of internalize and analyze first. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like you would benefit a lot from reading. Yeah, I think actual physical book reading, not just, listening. Yeah, just reading. Okay, give me a book recommendation. And it better be good. About what? Don't just like... <laughs> Dude, don't give him... Don't give him Einstein's... <laughs> I gave you Einstein's, bro. You can pick another one from up here if you want. No, I'm still reading that one. Okay, cool. Yeah. I need to start yours. I'll, I'll, I'll find a book for you. What okay. kind of books do you like? You should read... Um, you should read some E.O. Wilson. Elaborate. You should read uh, Consilience. Okay, can you Synopsis give me the spark, spark notes? Spark notes? Um, he's talking about the joining of, um, of all these different like, uh, sciences, like math, science, social sciences. Consilience is what is the term for it. Um, finding unity within all these things. And he's, he just talks about how, um, how useful and important it is it's a really good book. Okay. Mm. What's it called again? Consilience. Okay. E.O. Wilson. Consilience. Okay, Consilience. That's one recommendation. Uh, I read a book that made me cry a lot. That was a kid's book. I told you about it. I think I cried too, but I can't remember. It was so long ago. The Little Prince? Yeah. No, you read Miraculous oh, Journey no, no, no. Edward Tulane. Uh, Edward Tulane. Dude, you read that when you were a kid? Yeah, I was. I, I remember I was on a camping trip. Um, we were going to the Gila. Um and I read it in the car. Oh, dude. Yeah. It wrecked me. It's, he's, he is a, a little stuffed rabbit with, uh, with, uh, consciousness. And he remembered, or he just goes through his journey about all the places he's been. He stays with like, 
he's a little girls and then he goes into like a shop where he sits right mm -hmm. yeah I, it's been a while. He, but he can't move Right. So he's at the whim of everybody around him and the opinions of everybody around him. And he has to accept love that he is loved. It's really good. That's a good one. I have it up there if you want to borrow it. Is it, um, it holds up? It's not just. No, I mean, it's definitely a kid's book, but it was lovely when I read it. Oh, okay. It was like really, um, yeah, it still got me, mm. you know? So. Yeah, it is a good book. Yeah. You, that's, you probably get through that one pretty quick. It's yeah. just tough because I have so much resistance and maybe it's like because of my upbringing of just doing online school, um, not focusing on education, not like I went to a private school before that. And so we were not required to read, um, you know, Romeo and Juliet or the Odyssey or whatever, like require, were required readings there were. I didn't have to participate in any of that. So I have not been a reader my entire life. So there's been books that I have read and I've thoroughly enjoyed, but it does not come naturally to me. I get so bored so fast. And maybe so that's just like yeah. me not having the right material to read. Well, it could be, but it also like I was, I was talking about this earlier. I mentioned it earlier. Like you got to just train that part of your brain. You got to, you got to, yeah, you gotta it's, just build that it's up. a muscle. Yeah. Yeah. So even if you just read for five minutes and then 10 minutes and then 15 minutes, you just gotta, you gotta build up your, yeah your endurance to just yeah and it's it. definitely something i have not put any sort of priority on so maybe at 27 i can start working <laughs> that flimsy muscle well, yeah i mean most most i would say most of the reading that i used to do um would just be before i went to bed as a, yeah. way, to, as a mm -hmm. way to just go to sleep yeah it's a lot better than being on your phone they say like don't eat food yeah. three hours before you go to bed and don't be on your phone three hours who's they obama <laughs> <laughs> Barack. Barack Obama. So do you want to talk a little bit about uh, Alex at the gym? Alex? Because <laughs> Alex said he's the mama bear at the climbing gym. Damn it, dude, I wasn't going to. I was going <laughs> to refer to him as the bear whisperer. Oh, shoot. Shoot. I forgot you wanted to be anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. What about Alex? Um, what's new, what's new with homies? What's new with Alex? Alex is just crushing, bro. He's outside a lot. Yeah. He stopped inviting me. Um, <laughs> he stopped inviting He you. might be inviting my former girlfriend, oh. but we'll see. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. How, uh, I think it's awesome. I think, yeah. I don't know. Did they, did they meet like when you were still together? Yeah. Okay. So maybe I introduced them to each other. Yeah. That would be cool. And they I have a successful isn't he already relationship. Dating? Alex no. is already dating someone, isn't he? No. No? No. I thought he was. <laughs> no. Has he been Has he been in a relationship? I think he past? said he was, and then I talked to her, and then uh, she said no, not anymore, or something. I don't know. But How long yeah. ago was that? A couple weeks. A couple yeah. weeks ago. That he, he Did he say he was still in the relationship? No. Because oh. I feel like the last time I You should to never Alex, have a gym crush. G gym crushes never work out. <laughs> Am I right, bro? I don't know. What do you mean by that? I mean, I don't know. I just meeting you. You you went to fist bump me like like I could relate to your your situation. Do there. you have a girlfriend? No. Do you want a girlfriend? No. Do you want a boyfriend? No. Do you want? Did you have a girlfriend? No, of course not. I've never been in a relationship. <laughs> You've never been in a relationship. He's full of shit. Oh, okay. Have you ever been in a like a long term any like a serious relationship? Never? No. Interesting. Do I, I mean, look at me. I would think that, I mean, you're 23. I feel like you. most people have like teenage or younger 20s, like flings and relationships. Me, bro, I'm different. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you feel like Alex is as strong a climber as he talks about? You're really obsessed with Alex, bro. <laughs> no, I'm just curious. Your opinion versus kidding. other people. Um, I love Alex. This is just... This is mad love for Alex, but there needs to be like, um, if he's that strong, then it's important that he can Listen, show bro, that. All he has to do is go out to his V16 uh, <laughs> foothills boulder that he put up and just send it on video, bro. You yeah. don't believe him? I, I, what I would love to see is just Alex go to Hito. You know, that's a classic foothills V10 mm -hmm. um, and just, just send it. And then 
And then the debate's over. And that's over. Drama. <laughs> that's over, bro. Stone Age drama. Love Stone yeah. Age. Love Stone Age. I'm a centrist when it comes to so the Stone, Stone, Stone Age, Age drama. drama. Yeah. I, like, do you just, you're like on both sides of the aisle? Exactly. I, I just like can't form strong. Like I, I, I see both sides, mm-hmm. but I just choose because I'm so privileged to just <laughs> not like engage or participate. Yeah. I went to Stone Age for six months. It's a privilege to be able to attend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the Dude, most privileged real. gym in Albuquerque. You know what's cool, though? Hmm. On the on the thought of the privilege of climbing culture, Yeah, uh, I was, I'm talking, I talked to Lance, who's the, the lead setter. And, oh, we love uh, Lance. Lance is cool. And, I'm, and I was also talking, he gave me uh, the owner's, I forgot her name, the owner's number, and I'm going to talk to her about teaching the a kids, class yeah, those kids, yeah. for the kids in the Juntos thing. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and they said they potentially will see what happens, but he was saying that there might be some funds for them to donate as well as I'll do some fundraising to try to make sure that it can happen at least like once a month for them. But that's, that's, I think that's cool because it, it breaks that, uh, structural privilege in a way. Um, because the community can then start to be that kind of security blanket for, uh, equality in, uh, privilege. Take care of your man. It's fun. I think I think um kids should climb. It's good yeah. for them. It's really fun. Um it's I am excited to see more climbing gyms in more places. Las Cruces. Oh, where are you going? You're going to Las Cruces now. I'm going to Las Cruces. There's a new climbing gym in um in El Paso. Oh. Um called Sessions. So, I'm sure I'm sure it'll be a great time. Is El Paso is that like an hour away from Las Cruces? It's about like 45 minutes away. And so you're moving back, uh, and you're going to be hanging out with your grandfather and just getting some of his knowledge. Yeah. I'm jealous, bro. That sounds like fun. Shout out to Alex, bro. <laughs> we'll just clip that in at the end. Shout out to my boy. We'll Alex. end the podcast that way. He's a cool guy. <laughs> Alex is great. Is there is there beef or what? No, there's no beef. Except, Maybe. I mean, there's a lot of drama um, surrounding Alex and his ability to, to climb the stuff that he says he does. So he, inf- like, he exaggerates or what? Uh, exaggeration would would mean that there is already some something that he's exaggerating about, like his own ability. But um, <laughs> from what I've seen, um, he hasn't he hasn't been the most truthful in his. Mm. It's just he's made claims that haven't been backed up with um, evidence. With evidence that I've seen or you've seen, but I have heard people argue that they've seen him climb twelves. So um, I don't know. It's just that uh, I think you have to see it for yourself. Ollie has to see it for himself, and you know probably Josh and Jorge and everybody else need to like those. Those guys are just they're just having fun. Yeah. Just rowdy, rowdy youngsters. It's just good to talk shit. It's good to push people. Good, it's yeah. good to, yeah. At the end of the day, it's like doesn't matter. No, as long <laughs> as you're getting on the wall and you're healthy and you're, yeah, you know, going out to Anodyne before a podcast, <laughs> <laughs> bro. <laughs> I, I forgot. I forgot that this day was today. Well, I'm glad that you came through. Still came on. Yeah. Yeah, that takes a lot these days is yeah. to roll up. And we'll have you on again when you're back in town. It'll give you a reason Great. to come into town. I'll put a memo so I don't go out. <laughs> Do not drink. Drink so much. Yeah. That'll be good. God. Cool. I was playing pool. You were playing pool? I was playing pool. Dude, anodyne. playing pool at Anodyne. That's it's, a, it's a good time. It's a great time. It's fun. Thanks for the invite. Well, I mean, it, was, it was more of a spur of the moment type, type deal. I love that kind of stuff. Oh, you love it? You would, you would come out <laughs> I love inside jokes. I would love to be. Uh, I was sometime. thinking the exact same thing. I was. <laughs> that's a Michael Scott quote for sure. Yeah. All right. Cool. All <laughs> that's, right. That's well, just, yeah, we'll clip that in. Uh, all right, everybody. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Um, do you care about sending people to your social media or anything like that? No. No. Okay. No, I don't care. Uh, cool. Honestly, I hope they don't look me up. <laughs> <laughs> He's not on any social media. But he will write books in like 10 years, 20, 30 years, and you'll read them. You'll be requ- it'll be required reading for your...
your liberal liberal arts degree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>